All right, cool. Hey guys, so today with us we have James Rate, Duke commit, VLOU member, all around stud. Let's uh, let's get to it. So let's start off. Let's introduce you a little bit, like where you're from, mm. you know, background, who you are, who makes James Rate. Yeah, so I mean, like you said, I'm James Rate. I'm a 2023 Duke commit. I'm from Stanford, Connecticut. I throw baseballs. <laughs> I go to King School. Um, kind of grew up playing baseball. I've been doing it since I was four years old. Uh, my mom really is the one that kind of introduced me to the sport way back when, just playing catch and in our street, really, just kind of you know getting to know like how the sport operates. My grandpa was a huge Yankees fan all throughout his life, so I mean he kind of put that inspiration to me with being uh, just a Yankees fan and kind of following that along. Um, so I mean it's just it's been a fun journey so far. Cool, cool. So. Um yeah, that's uh, super interesting. Your mom is the one that put it on. Obviously, mm -hmm. then she probably has a, a big connection. I'm assuming by grandfather you mean on her on her side. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she obviously has a big connection to her father, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. And so, like, let's, uh, you know, baseball being this this platform to really allow you to compete and showcase who you are, right? What what do you derive the most from, let's say, like. Uh, competition like in a game what do you what do you feel is like the most you know beneficial to you out of doing that I mean just you know getting those reps in game there's there's nothing you can compare to it I mean you could do live ABs like we do here just yeah. kind of but being in the game and going against other kids and literally just wanting to be the best no matter what in the game like I know we talk about all the time here about kind of like the jungle mentality mm -hmm. and all that, and you know that really comes out when you're in game. You can't you can't like, compare to that. Yeah, I remember uh, one of the first times, uh, not necessarily that I met you, but that I got to see you compete, and uh, was here. You weren't even competing yet, right? You were just mm -hmm. on show yeah. because nobody had really seen you throw yet. Everybody was trying to feel out, yeah. right? It's, it's always what happens when we get a new guy that comes in that everybody's like, oh, oh yeah, mm. I know he's good. I've seen him play in a game somewhere, yeah, yeah. but now you're in like this domain, right? So, and I remember there was this almost like this, uh, it's cool, it's like this blank stare mm. glazed over your face and oh, yeah. like you, you, you just had this, this sensation of like, or at least you were, you were giving off this sensation that like, I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to compete and I'm ready to yeah. show everybody who the fuck I am. Absolutely, I mean, kids always tell me like when, if I have a start in the dugout, even in between innings, before I even go out there, they're like, you're scary to walk up to. Like, we don't wanna talk to you, mm. but I don't even think like it's, it's kind of me being angry or anything like that. I'm just so locked in with trying to, you know, the object at hand, I'm locked in with it. I'm, I know you versus me, I'm gonna get you out that there's nothing else in the world that matters at that very moment. Mm. It's only me and you and the catcher, that's it. It's pretty interesting. So there, there's a lot of young, uh, you know, people that follow us as well. And then like, uh, I guess selfishly, like I have young kids of my own. Like, how do you think that happened? Like, how do you think you, you, you like actually learned or developed that trait? My mindset's always been important to me and I think uh, it's just been a process really since Little League kind of feeling out what works for me. I mean, some kids are able to go out there and kind of, you know, come back in the dugout and shut it off. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not like that. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to be on, I want to be on the whole time I'm in there, locked in, focused the entire time I'm throwing. Mm. So it's just kind of, it's something that I've developed over time. I mean, there's not really cool. a specific, specific like game or something like that where I really, you know, felt that I locked in. I mean, once, the, I mean, I kind of lied there. I mean, one specific moment that I remember was throwing against the real ballers in game uh, mm. in Georgia. I believe it was two years ago now or Ferbs. a year ago. Ferbs, absolutely. Um, but that game, I think I've been, that's probably the most locked in I've ever been. I actually remember that game. Great pitched against my guys in Georgia. And it was, uh, I think it was Al Alpharetta or Kennesaw, one of those, but he was very dominant, I will say. And the reason why I knew he was he was he was really dominant that game. A lot of my hitters, I got about five or six lefty sticks that are really good, and he's a righty. And they were coming back in the dugout saying, "Man, it's, I can't pick up his slider. It's pretty damn good." And when I know when my guys are coming in, they're pretty good hitters, and they're saying that type of stuff. I know the guys are dude. But again, Ray, he is filthy. He had a great game that day. Uh, probably one of the reasons that. 
he did so well, I will say, is I did not pencil myself in the three hole that game, right? That that would have happened. Maybe he has a good game, but I pimp one 420 dead center on him. And it's a movie, it goes viral. But anyway, great, great mount presence. Good, great stuff. Um, I really like his personality all around. He's going far, he's going far in the game. Real talented kid. And I mean, cool. it's probably one of the best games I've had to date. Um, that and the Georgia Bombers game I threw in this year. Um, but I mean, like I said, it's just been something that's kind of developed over time and I think it reached its peak during that So do game. you think like, uh, you think it was developing until that moment and then that sort of like cemented it? I think, yeah, that's probably a good way to say it. It really, it all kind of just clicked then. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. found like that game really said, this is what works for me, this is what I'm gonna go with. So mm -hmm. that's just kind of, I've rode that wave until now and it's just something that I'm not gonna stop with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, were you recruited before that game with Ferbs? Yes, so I was, I was recruited. Against um, Ferb, sorry. Yeah, I was, so the recruiting process really started for me um, summer of my eighth grade year, I want to say, just kind of some slight interactions with coaches and then going to camps and stuff like that. I did a lot with uh, Boston College and going to their camps and stuff like that. Um, and then I ended up committing uh, September of my sophomore year. Um, so it's just kind of, it's been a pretty long process up mm -hmm. until now, but I mean, it's one that I'm definitely thankful to have gone through. Uh, yeah. It taught me a lot of life lessons, a lot of lessons in general, not only with the sport that I kind of, it'll help me throughout my life, so. Yeah, wow, okay. So like, what, what, what life lessons in particular, like what was, let's, let's start off with this, like what was difficult about the beginning stages of it? Just kind of getting to kind of deal with failure, like in a way, because so you gotta realize like some coaches, they're just not gonna have any interest in you. Mm. They're not gonna wanna talk to you and kind of, I mean, that relates to life Do you still a lot. remember those people? Of course, All that's right. what, so what drives me now. They in your like, conference? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Okay. a couple good. of them are. Cool, but, cool, uh, cool. Um, but it's just, it's something I've carried with me because in life, I mean, not everybody's gonna like you and it's mm -hmm. just something you gotta deal with. You can't sit there and kind of whine about it. You just gotta pick it up and move on. Yeah, 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 100%. You know, I um, was talking to somebody recently because I've, I've had some recent loss in my life, right? And I was remembering how they talked about the people mm -hmm. and how they were so loved and how they were so um, revered and, and like just these, they were just so wholesome and good hearted, yeah. right? And I just thought, I was like, wow, I don't think anybody would ever talk about me that way. Yeah. And I was okay with it though at the mm -hmm. same time. And, and I think that's sort of what you're getting at is like, you know, you can't, you gotta wear that chip and yeah. that, that has to have that sort of, uh, that fire that burns inside of you that, Absolutely. you know, you can't have everybody like you. If everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong. Exactly, I mean, my dad, he always tells me, he's like, if you, if you think I give a shit about what people think, think again. Cause mm. that, and that kind of, it's, it's very true when you think about it. Cause like you can't worry about other people's opinions. And I think that's where a lot of kids get caught up, especially mm -hmm. in our sport. It's kind of thinking too much about what other people are gonna think about you. And I mean, I was recruiting starting so young. It's like, they always feel like they have these eyes on them. Mm. Like there's someone that's gonna judge them no matter what they do. And I mean, in a way it's kind of true, but I mean, you just, just, you can't think like that. Yeah. Well <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of hard not to think like that, right? Because yeah. as you just said, it is kind of true, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I think we had a, uh, uh, a conference or, or like one of our educational series last year with uh, Corey Mascara, who's at Wake. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, the kids nowadays have, have one of the hardest times ever because yeah. everything they do is on display. And Absolutely. I think that's so true. Absolutely. Um, so I think it's so... It's sort of extremely impressive, not sort of, it's, it's extremely impressive that you've had the capacity to sort of block that out, even when you had those who said they didn't like you, or at least even if you didn't block mm. it out, you transferred it into motivation or into, into sort of this underlying burning sensation. And how do you Definitely. think you did that? Why, why transfer or how, how have the capacity to take this sort of dislike or disapproval yeah. and transfer that into motivation? I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a kind of a disapproval. I mean, I kind of always had an understanding of kind of what's, what the stakes were. Like mm -hmm. when I'm throwing in a game, like, you know, I look behind the plate and there's six dudes there. Like mm -hmm. It's kind of it's hard to ignore, but 
I mean, for me, it's always just goes back to the love of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I'm not, I'm not out there trying to showcase anything. I mean, to me, I treat every game like I'm in Little League. I'm just out there having fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just the way I go about it. I mean, that's kind of comes from my mom once again. I mean, she always tells me to have fun no matter what. I mean, it's just kind of like, I don't, I don't worry about it too much. Yeah, I, mean. I, I find that so interesting though that you relate fun to this super intense locked in competition. Yeah. So it, it speaks to a little bit of, of you, right? Of what you actually define as fun, mm. right? So like, so is it fun? Like, if, did you have fun if you didn't win? No, okay. I'm a huge, huge fan of winning. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I guess, I guess because it's, it's so odd to hear super locked in, yep. but yet I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, that's an impressive trait. And, you know, with, with all these things and all these mindset things, right? And, and mm. it's the real purpose of doing these combos with athletes and really because... Number one, I want other athletes to understand, like, you're not alone. Like, everybody's Absolutely. probably experiencing the same thing you're experiencing, right? Yeah. Our, our, our biggest or, or easiest route to, like, true psychosis is to believe, like, we're alone on this planet Absolutely. and we're alone in, like, our thoughts and nobody else feels the way I do. And, mm -hmm. But the, the essence of, like, understanding how you derive you know, your motivation, your pride, your desire, I think it's truly what I want to try and get out of these things. And I think it's impressive the way in which you do it. Um, so let's, let's go back to, um, you're recruited, right? Yep. Now you're, I don't, I'm assuming you announced it at some point, right? This is pre yeah. us knowing each other. Definitely. Yep. So, um, what's the emotions there? I had a, I mean, immediately after recruiting, I had a sense of responsibility. Cause I mean, most kids, they'll live off that high. For me, it was, I told my parents, we celebrated for a minute and then immediately I was like, it's time to get to work. Hmm. Cause I mean, I tell kids all the time, they're like, oh, like you're going to Duke, oh, you're set. I'm like, T I haven't done shit. Mm. Like I literally have not done shit. I mean, mm. I'm still trying to prove to myself and to everybody else why I deserve to go to Duke. Mm. And to me, that sense will carry with me no matter what I do. When I get to Duke, I mean, which, whichever route I go, it, it'll be with me. Because, I mean, like, like I said, like, I haven't done anything. Like, yes, I've committed, but still, I'm still trying to prove things to myself, prove things to other people that, like, I'm here. Like, I'm, this is who I am. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I was listening to a book by Cameron Haynes. He's a... He's a bow hunter. The book is called Endure. Um, and he talked about the imposter syndrome that gets placed on people mm -hmm. who are great. Yeah. And those who are great all possess it. And if they don't, they're probably not as great as they think. So do you think you've experienced some of that where, you know, maybe it's not necessarily that you don't think you don't deserve to go to Duke, but mm -hmm. question at times, like, am I good enough? Can I... Absolutely. Can I play there? Absolutely. I mean, there'll be days where I'll have a bad bullpen or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's, it sounds kind of stupid to think about, but I mean, there'll be days where I'm like, oh, okay. But it's not a sense where I'm going to, you know, dwell on it and kind of sit back and like mm. feel bad for myself. It, it's more of a sense of like, if I don't do well and I'm having these feelings like, oh, maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I'm not mm. that good. I'm just like, okay, fuck it. Let's go. I'm going to go prove that I am this good. I need to work harder. I need right, to there do you go. more. So you allow it to fuel you yeah. as opposed to... Yeah, so um, I, I, I've always talked about the fact that I think fear is the greatest motivator yeah. on the planet. Um, Absolutely. When harnessed, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, imposter syndrome is really not much different, right? You're mm. just fearing Absolutely. that the world will be like, oh, wait, they figured yeah. it out. I'm not as good as I am. Absolutely. Or, I'm not that smart or I don't know anything. Yeah, so like, um, cool. So, it, it, you know, and it, it seems as though those, you know, in your shoes and, and guys that are going to continue to be really successful, right? The number one thing that I've noticed amongst all of you guys is that... Uh, you have this insatiable quest for more success. Mm -hmm. And I think I can see right away when, when an athlete commits and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the foot comes off the gas pedal yep. 
Um, and I, I just think like, I just look at that and, and I wonder, I, I'm just really trying to get them to understand or, or I guess, you know, needing them to figure out the fact that like, man, that yeah. is going to have ramifications for the rest of your life. Absolutely. That, that is the mentality you take. Absolutely. I mean, like, I watch a lot of podcasts with like Navy SEALs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, how you do something is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're a guy who's going to commit and be satisfied with that and kind of take a step back, like, that's yeah. just who you are as a person. Yep. I mean, that's really hard to change. Like you said, you're going to be that guy for the rest of your life. You're going to take that with you for the rest of your life. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting, too. I mean, like you were just talking about, about you know, never kind of being satisfied with the success you have. It's like you're always moving forward. Like I'm always trying to move forward. I mean, mm. if I hit 97, I'm then trying to hit 98. I'm mm. never satisfied with what I've done. Mm. I love kind of talking about mindset because I used to be one of the guys where – if I'd have a bad inning, it, I'd let it snowball and snowball mm. and snowball and it'd kind of carry with it. How'd you stop that? Just kind of tuned out the noise and kind of got locked in like we talked mm. about before. That's kind of the big separator. That's what really helped me. It was just kind of staying focused all the time and not trying to dwell on the past. Like control what you can control. That's a big mm -hmm. thing. I always tell myself that on the mound. Control what you can control. If, a kid, if I spot up a fastball inside and a kid pieces it for a double, like... Good on him. Now mm -hmm. I'm on to the next guy. You mm -hmm. can't keep thinking about what's happened in the past. You got to mm -hmm. keep moving and keep going. So, Cool. Tough. Uh, a lot easier said than done, right? Um, especially when there's big stakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like it's not just this meaningless game where mm -hmm. you're just hanging out and playing. Do you spend time envisioning your future? Or, you know, how do you, how do you sort of approach day in and day out, right? Because... Listen, I, I know you're super consistent. I know that, you know, like discipline is at the forefront of, you know, yep. one of your one of your key character traits. Like like how do you sort of approach that to ensure that that, that is there? I mean, personally, I, I'd be lying if I said it's all I think about kind of mm -hmm. going into my future. I try to take things a day at a time, mm -hmm. probably even an hour at a time, to be honest with you. I mean just if I'm in down there throwing, that's all that matters to me is that mm -hmm. moment throwing, getting better. If I'm lifting, that's all that matters. When I'm eating my meals, you know, trying to get, you know, bigger, get better than in that sense, that's all that matters to me. But I mean, it's always kind of in the back of my head driving me about trying to, or like thinking about what I can be like my mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. And I'm just still just trying to reach that potential. So mm -hmm. it's, it's always there kind of driving me, but Still, I'm, I'm always in the How clear is that image of your potential? To me, I mean, people are always telling me like, oh, you, you're gonna have a great future and all that. But to me, it's just, like I said, I, it's, I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. I'm That's still cool. trying to. It's very cool. So like, uh, I think a lot of times when I've talked to young individuals that you can tell are going to be really successful, they know there's an area where that Mm. takes place they know there's a certain level that yep. you know their success will land them at but it's sort of very vague sort of like a shadowy presence yeah. as opposed to this sort of very defined i'm pitching Absolutely. in yankee stadium throwing yeah. three two to yeah you know because in reality right like the the ladder that I just mentioned would almost limit you absolutely to to what you could achieve. Yeah, I mean you're you're capping yourself. Like yeah. you're literally giving yourself something to reach, and when you get there, it's kind of gonna be like, all right, like what what now? Like yeah. I'm I'm driving for even further than that. I want to like it's it's difficult to talk about too because like you said, it's kind of just been in the back of my memory or like sure. the back of my head. Like I'm not necessarily thinking about it, but. I mean, like, I want to have a successful career no matter what. So it's just, it's one of those things where I'm right. not focused on it, but at the same time, I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Why do you want to be great? I think this is such a tough question. Um, yeah. And I've asked it to quite a few people and, and in, in, in an array of different fields. But why be great? Like, being great is really tough. Yeah. I mean, it all goes back to my parents. Because, I mean, something that, they're my greatest motivators. They're absolutely my greatest motivators because... Way too often I see kids, you know, whether it's coming in here or just going to school and they're just kind of half-assing it, going through it. And I'm like, 
I, I watch how hard my parents work and mm. how what they sacrifice to get me where I am just to be here. And mm. I'm not, I'm not going to take that lightly. If, if I'm doing something, I'm going to give it 120% because I know my parents did that in order for me to be here. Mm. So that's, they're my motivator and they're kind of the reason I want to be great because I want to do it for them. I mean, s selfishly, I want to do it for myself as well, sure, of course. Sure. Yeah. But I, I see what they, they have to do to get me here and I just want to you know, almost pay them back for it. And you know, like, that's a thank you. Does that ever flip flop between being afraid that you won't be able to do that? Absolutely, mm. I, absolutely. I mean, there'll be days where I really like, don't want to, you know, get out of bed, like don't want to lift, don't mm. want to do all this. And then it like, I'm like, oh, well, somebody else out there is lifting. And then that'll, it'll get in my head and I won't stop thinking about that. Mm. I won't start thinking about somebody's out there getting better than me and almost you know, making their parents more proud than my mm -hmm. parents would be of me. So that's, it's a fear of mine, like not being, yeah, yeah. not a, achieving my potential almost. Sure, yeah. Um, it's great when, I mean, first of all, it, it, impressively mature, but it's also probably helps in the sense that um, it's, it's sort of removing you as the focal point, right? And Absolutely, like, yeah. as the sort of motivator or energy mm -hmm. driver, right? So it's, it can be applied to, you know, your parents. It's probably almost a discussion you never want to have with them either mm -hmm. because of the fact that like, you don't want them to almost say they're proud of you. You don't yeah, want them to exactly. do those things, right? Because there's still, there's still these, yeah. these, even if it's fake, you mm. need to imagine it on a, on a regular basis. Yeah, I think that's absolutely extremely cool. Extremely cool. Um, oh wow. Um, so I mean, transitioning forward, like let's talk about you know sort of the let's unwrap how you've gotten to where you've gotten to yeah. from a like training performance. Like you know, I, you came here about a year and a half ago, yeah. right? Definitely. So like. But like even prior to that, like all the different sort of steps you've taken and then, you know, areas where you still think you're like, hey, like these are areas I still want to focus on and get better at. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I've been blessed throughout my life just being put in the hands of people that I really trust, my family mm -hmm. really trusts. Like my mom calls them my team. Yep. Like, you know, with whether it's advisors or coaches or trainers, just everybody I've been to put in touch with has been so... So I've been so fortunate to be able to work with them and have the experience that I've, experiences that I've had with them. I mean, but kind of things that I'm still working on is just, just like I said, I'm just trying to get better, like 1% better at it every mm -hmm. single day. And I know people, people say that a lot, but to me, I take that to heart. I mean, it's something that I'm actually trying to do. Like some people will just say it and, you know, words are words, but You're I'm right. actually, I'm going through the steps just trying to, improve myself 1% every day. And you know, every day I'm not gonna be able to come in here and get my throwing done and all that, but you know, whether it, it doesn't even have to be baseball related, whether it's kinda mentally like, I personally, I'm not good at, you know, I'm good at a lot of things. So like, you could be struggling at a class, but yeah. putting time and attention into that class, yep. right? Although it may have no bearing on your mm -hmm. athletic future. Definitely. The idea that I must endure, I must suffer, I must struggle exactly, through this yeah. in order to get better at that. Yeah, I mean, it all goes back to like what I was saying before about how you do something is how you do everything. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna go into school and half-ass it, then I can't come in here and say that I'm being 120% at what right, I'm doing. Right. I have to be 120% at everything I do. Right. So. Yeah. On my way to class right now. First period, we got physics. Let's get it. It's almost, um, so, uh, you know, they talk about the greats of whether it's sport, whether it's mm -hmm. business, whether it's anything, right? And they have this overwhelming sense of um, uh, sort of obsessiveness. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and there's the famous quote, I don't remember who it was, but if, um, if you want to strive to have balance, then accept being mediocre. Um, because there is yeah. nobody that is no. great that is not obsessive. Absolutely. And, and I think it's so impressive, right? So like, yet at the same time, that must mean then we must limit mm. all these other interactions in our life because yeah. if we must be who we are, exactly. 
at all times, then we can't have too many different stimuluses coming into our life. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's, it's a difficult balance kind of mm -hmm. dealing with it all. I mean, some people, you know, don't like the pro players, like all they have to worry about is baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely outside influences on them. Sure. Like, there's a ton to think about and stuff like that. But for me, I can honestly say that Baseball is all I think about. Mm -hmm. Getting better is all I think about. When I'm in school, all I'm thinking about is what I'm going to eat before I come here to lift, right. what I'm going to do in my throwing program, how I'm going to get better for that day, what I'm going to do when I'm lifting, what like my mentality is going to be for the day. And that starts from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, with the obsessive nature, it is definitely a real thing. It's definitely something that exists with, within me, at least, I can personally say. But. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay, so... We're coming up on your senior season. We have a huge off season ahead of us, right? Yep. Our, our main focal points this off season is, you know, getting a handle on our nutrition, which, yep. you know, obviously when you reach sort of the level you're at, right, mm -hmm. uh, we realize that nutrition is just as much of a job as Absolutely. pretty much anything, every, anything yeah. else. Um, For breakfast this morning, I have two pieces of whole grain toast. I'm going to throw some peanut butter on. I'm going to slice up a banana, throw a little on top too. Um, I have two eggs, a glass of orange juice, a yogurt, uh, and that's pretty much it. I got the toast in the toaster right now, so just getting getting ready to get the day going. What the final product looks like, um, and right now I'm kind of on a, a bulking diet, so I'm eating close to 4,000 calories a day. Um, so this in total is uh, pretty close to 1,000 calories, um, considering you know I finished the rest of the banana, um, I have about two tablespoons of peanut butter on each piece of bread, um, and then the two eggs I cooked with one tablespoon of olive oil, which is like 100 calories or something like that, which is good as well because it gets my fats in for the day and all that. Um, so it's pretty pretty much a, a little life hack for you, throw in some olive oil with your eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat this, um, and then get ready for school. But so we got nutrition as a focal point, right? We have yeah. uh, the development of you know another high quality off-speed pitch yep. and then further tunneling some of our other ones how do you balance all of those different criteria that you're trying to focus on i mean it all kind of comes up at different points in the day because i'm when if like like i was saying before when i'm focused on something that's all i'm focused on that's all i'm trying to do so whether it's if I'm eating breakfast, that's all I'm worried about. That's all I'm focusing on. If I'm eating lunch, same thing, dinner, you know, mm. pre-workout meal, whatever. But then when I'm down here, if I'm focusing on the pitch, that's all I'm focusing on. So that kind of helps me to balance it out um, and not really think about it as a wide picture. And, oh, I have so much to do. I have so much to worry about and kind of sure. getting better. Just really breaking it up and focusing on one thing at a time is just mm. kind of... For me, it's the key because it, that it just it gives me one objective to reach at that very moment. Mm. I mean, that could be as simple as you know finishing my eggs in the morning, but that's that's a goal of mine. And once I reach that, I'm on to the next thing. Um, any sort of closing ideas that you sort of want to get across, or that you feel is something you struggled with greatly, and you're just really happy that you've moved on from it. Like you, we, we talked about at the very beginning, the kind of the sense of I'm alone. Mm. I'm, it's just me. I'm the only person going through these problems. Uh, I just something important is to think about is like no matter what you're going through, you're you're not alone. There's mm. someone else out there that's going through it, and that's kind of it's something that'll help you through the day. I mean, it. It can be as simple like as stupid as oh I have a test like oh I'm I'm this is terrible like it's just me but then think about the like 13 20 kids in your class like mm -hmm. they have to go through it too they're going right. through the same thing so there's there's always someone that's going through the same thing and I mean you're never never truly alone I mean if you if you ever feel alone too like there's always people to go talk to about it like you you'll never be alone mm. so very very true very true okay awesome cool. thank you and. For everybody that, that is on this, uh, hopefully you got a great glimpse into certain tactics, certain mindsets, um, certain training tactics, and then and in even understanding the, the primary difference there between what motivates James as opposed to what drives James. And I think that's such a clear and necessary distinction. Um, you know, we often talk about the fact that motivation is a very flighty and short-lived um, 
sort of accelerant, whereas deep internal determination and drives usually stem from very dense emotional things, such as the pride of a parent or the you know benefit uh, that you could potentially bring to a multitude of people's lives. Mm. So um, hope you got a lot out of that, and thank you again, James, of for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for having me.